This video contains the top 5 best Town Hall 14 attack strategies to 3 star any base. Let's start with the Fireball Rocket Balloons. This army might seem relatively niche, but the Fireball is a very strong equipment if you can use it correctly paired with the Warden Walk. So you'll want to mainly start this off by using the Grand Warden Walk to clear out a large area of the base. You can pretty much let your Warden walk and you want him to clear as many of these buildings and just leave him alone. While this is happening, you should also be running in the use of a Zap Quake. This Zap Quake is usually used to clear a good chunk of buildings off of the map, usually an inferno tower along with other defenses around there. With five lightning and one earthquake, that's what you are striving for. With your warden walk though, using rage spells to keep your warden powering through is the name of the game. You want to be sure to get your warden walk to go in the right direction. Not only this, but clearing as many defenses as possible. Once you have the defenses sort of secured and you're able to clear clear a decent chunk of them, you can always go ahead and use your Earthquake spell in order to damage and then using a Fireball to absolutely destroy them. Now, of course, if you don't have a max level Fireball, which I know most of you guys don't, you can always run two Earthquake spells with a minimum level of level 18 on that Fireball. Now, while that Warden Walk is going on and you're trying to set up the Fireball, you can basically send in your hero dive this is a massive hero dive being paired with that fireball what you're doing is with the king queen and log launcher is you're looking to enter the core of the base supportive ice golems and apprentice warden can very much help your heroes get a large amount of value while the fireball is being used other than this you just want to make sure that you're getting into the core with either your queen your king or even both heroes with the cc being able to clear a large area allowing you to have a ton of support with your royal champion you should be using that in order to clear out defenses more so closer to the outside while also clearing out defenses within the core of the base which is going to make it a lot easier for you to use the hog puppets and the seeking shield in order to clear a large area this then really leaves you with rocket balloons to use on the back end, which you should have more than enough to clear out the remaining defenses, which also will allow you to start setting up cleanup. Up next is the Queen Charge Hybrid, a strong option that has a lot of flexibility in regards to both the Queen Charge and the Siege Machine, such as using a Battle Blimp to bomb an area off of the map. Now with your said blimp, you can always run a yeti blimp using yetis and a rage spell in order to clear out some key defenses. Usually this is either done for funneling or pathing, which is very much going to help the hybrid itself. Using a rage spell to power the yetis with their brand new level to clear a large area with the yeti mites. Now with your queen charge though, while you're sending her in, be sure to funnel with sneaky goblins and keep her alive with her five healers. Any more than this is pretty much going to reduce its effectiveness. Other than this, you just want to be sure to control where your queen is going and allow her to start moving in closer to the town hall and clan castle. These are very important things to remove. As long as you can deal with the town hall and the clan castle, you've gotten a large amount of value. Being paired with a yeti blimp, it can actually create an enough pathing which makes it very easy for you to send in the other side of your funnel. This is typically with the barbarian king if you are not using the siege barrack with him. Other than this, you can pair that up with either the Rage Vial or the Vamp Stash. Either way, it's going to create enough of a funnel for you to send in the hybrid. Once the funnel has been set and your pathing has been created, your hybrid is going to go in with your hogs, miners, and your royal champion and grand warden. With the life gem, the grand warden can do a lot for your hybrid and keep up all of those troops with low HP. You should be using an early heal to get started off and alongside using an eternal tome as you work yourself into the core. Pretty much from here, you want to be sure to use a heal closer to a back end area where there are more splash damage defenses. Things like a scatter shot or even the multi-target inferno is a great place to do so since there might be giant bombs in a given area. 
other than this, you just want to be sure to have something like your royal champion with her hog puppets to reinforce with hogs and allow you to basically clear the rest of the base, not only with your heroes, but any of your leftover miners and hog riders, which is going to make it very easy for you to three star every time with hybrid as long as you can create good and solid pathing. The Blizzard Lalo is another top tier army that you can use at Town Hall 14. Not only is it the easiest of all the Lava Loons, but also by far the most powerful of all of them. Pretty much you're going to start off by using the Lava Hound with the Battle Blimp to get into prime position, with the Lava Hound to tank on an air defense and look for any seeking air mines. With the blimp, drop an invisibility, then use a rage spell. Start then timing your invisibility spells every four seconds in order to clear a large area off of the base. You want to be sure that this timing is correct so you can possibly remove the enemy CC, but mainly removing key defenses. Things like the town hall or any other air targeting defenses is usually a great idea. If you can get value, it's going to help you in the long run. Once you've cleared the area with the blizzard, you want to start then sending in your heroes. Having an ice golem with your king, apprentice warden, and your queen, this can actually start moving you in with a super wall breaker to boot to start entering deeper into the base. Possibly using another one in order to get even deeper in order to help deal with something like an enemy hero like the royal champion or archer queen. With your Barbarian King's ability, you can very easily clear large areas while having help with the Queen and also the Royal Champion. Using any of your spells like free spells to support your Royal Champion can very much help you clear larger and larger areas. What's really important about this is you just want to let your Hero Dive get as much of the base down so they could get a large area of the base, which means your Lava Loon has a very small area to work with. You have the Hog Rider puppets and the seeking shield of the royal champion to clear even more structures and if you can get down both heroes with your sui hero it's going to help your lava loon tremendously now while your royal champion is being used with your hero dive you should be starting your lava loon this is with one lava hound and around three to four balloons in just a couple groups with the warden to follow you should be sure to use more of your balloons in order to kind of funnel and have a nice balloon parade and you do want to be sure to use an early Grand Warren ability to protect them from any damage early on. Using haste spells to get to key defenses and also using free spells on splash damage defenses will very much help. Things like scatter shots and multi-target infernos are prime examples for you to use your free spells. Other than this, the haste spells are perfect to get those balloons to those key defenses and clear them out. Of course, that is why the life gem is so critical because of the HP increase of the balloon making it much easier for you to get through. Make sure though that you have cleanup with any other troops that you have left over, including your min minions, so you don't get yourself a time fail. Next up is Titan Smash. This is one of the best smash attacks that you can run at Town Hall 14, and being paired with the Flame Flinger, you can easily smash through the whole base while having great pathing. With that said, in support for your Flame Flinger, you have the Grand Warden Walk. This is going to set up a bit of a funnel, making it a little bit easier for you to use your Flame Flinger to activate the Town Hall or use an Earthquake spell and basically clear that side of the base. This Warden Walk is going to allow you to have a bit of support for your Titans while also creating nice funneling. On the other side of your funnel, though, you want to use the Barbarian King. He's going to clear out a larger area off of the base by making sure to control his pathing. Being sure to clear a large area of a compartment to basically make it a little bit easier for your titans to work in is the name of the game. You can always use a super wall breaker to enter him into the base, but you want to use his gauntlet ability in order to really open up the base and clear out a large area with really nothing able to stop him while he's underneath his gauntlet and rage ability, making it much easier for you to send your titans into the base. Now, in order to get your warden to start following, you either use your titan 
titans or your queen to start setting up before you send in your electro titans ice golem and any other support troops like an apprentice warden this should be done while the town hall is being taken down by the flame flinger over time you can use an early rage and a jump spell to get started you should use an early grand warn ability with the healing tome providing great coverage for the electro titans making them to the point where they really won't be able to die of course you do want to make sure that you're using any sort of spells like freeze or even skeleton spells to provide support for your electro titans or your back end royal champion you're going to be using a jump spell to go towards the back end of the base as you open up a lot more for both your queen and your electro titans while your royal champion is running amok on the back end side of the base providing a lot of support you do want to make sure that you are saving any spells or allowing you to save her ability in order to help clear out the back end and finally we get to the best army the super archer blimp dragon spam pretty much with an army like this you're going to set the funnel on two sides you're going to use your dragons in order to clear out the beginning stage with spamming all your dragons balloons warden king queen and your battle blimp this is all going to take using an eternal tome early with the healing tome it basically in order to keep all your dragons alive for the most part same for your balloons to look for any traps while that blimp goes deeper in drop it with an invisibility two clones a rage and then time your invisibility spells every four seconds be sure not to have any smaller troops in there so you don't clone them other than this, you just want to be sure to clear a large open area off of the base, making it much easier for your dragons to clear through the rest. It's really important to make sure that you are keeping everything moving through. So you should also be using your back end royal champion once that super archer blimp is over. It should have cleared a large area and the town hall off of the base, which then allows your royal champion to start clearing out some defense is more so on the back end this is definitely going to help in preparation for the dragons and any heroes that you might have that are still left up which you will have overall that royal champion can really help you in the long run and allows you the rest of your attack to just go without any sort of issues as you're going to be able to clear through with the dragons anyways making this a very strong and versatile attack that doesn't require you to boost any super troops for a very easy three star of course, these are just some of the strongest options that you can use right now. However, if you are looking to master the Fireball Warden or Warden Walks for that matter, I'd recommend checking out my Warden Walk guide right here.